guys, you know, what are you doing? So um, he has a, an intelligence, I think, that comes from his basic innocence. And he's just, he, his, his youthfulness is also what brings comedy to the show. Um, because he's the little guy, and he's the only little boy um, there. So it brings comic relief just from that. But I think I would say that the playfulness is me. Uh, Spike um, is noble, wants to help others. I guess that's me too, I would say. Um, and so if, if I were to look at a couple of, of character traits, maybe those are the two. He has integrity, and I like to think I do. Um, and he just he's a real helper. He wants to help people. So those are good virtues. Absolutely. So what's what's a I mean what's an average day like for you? You know when you're when you're going into the studio to do Spike. Like, could you take me through sort of like an average day in terms of you know the creation of Spike in terms when you go into the studio and and get your lines and stuff like that? Well, uh, basically for that particular show, we would get our scripts um, anywhere from a couple of days to two, three, maybe even four days in advance. Usually it's about two days in advance to three. And uh, the process would be that I would just take a quiet moment and just read it over uh, as an interest thing. So I wouldn't delve into prepping it right off the bat, but I just read it through and uh, enjoy the story. And when I come across my own lines, I'll just circle them. And um, I always pay attention to the action that comes before and after the line, as well as what's happening in the body of the scene, because the actor is really uh, responsible for the reactions and the action in the scene. So if Spike is, um, you know, trying to climb a tree or whatever, then I see that I have to put that action in the, in the line. So I may just, you know, make a, a note of that, those little things that, yep, yeah, he's doing this action here, he's doing that action there. Those are the only things that I really might mark down on my script. Other than that, I don't like to prepare it too much because I like to stay in the flow of the character. And one of the joys is that with every new script that we get, um, we don't know, of course, until we read it through, what new adventures the character gets into, and therefore what our reactions are going to be. So part of the fun is loosely preparing it and then listening to what the other actors are doing so that you can respond to what they're doing. This particular show is a prelay format, which gives us the license to listen to each other as we're acting and respond to what they're saying. Unlike on camera, you can see the other person, you're physically in front of them. You use those visual reactions as well to respond. But in voiceover, we have to listen. Now, the other trick for me is that um, I can only prepare so much too because I don't have Tara Strong with me right there in the studio. Tara's in LA, record separately. So um, one of the actors in the studio will, will read uh, Twilight for me. And so it's not exactly acted like Tara would act but it's read for me and, and I have to sort of respond to those lines. So in some ways I have to put a little bit more attention on um, what I would imagine her to respond like as opposed to her actually responding to me. That's also um, with the help of the director. So my, my role is a teeny bit different than the others in that respect, but it's become something that you, it's like a muscle. Um, you just get used to doing it. Um, it gets quicker and quicker, you know, every, project you do and certainly if you do more than a few episodes of the character the character just lives inside of you so the preparation is minimal because you just become that character so now you're just in the response mode do you ever take spike home with you oh yeah i keep him over there he likes to be in the closet sometimes we've got a little tv set up in the computer and they're ready <laughs> <laughs> I ever take spike with me um He's with me, he's inside of me, but I, I don't usually perform him or voice him, you know, unless, uh, I don't know, I get silly with friends or I'm, I come out in a character. But, no, he usually comes out when it's time to prepare him and time to perform, and or I'll be at a convention, and he comes out a lot there. <laughs> and uh, another fan question is, is, will Rarity ever get the hint in regards to how Spike feels? Oh, Rarity. I don't know him, but I'll tell you something. I really hope so, because I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, that's a good, that's a really good question. I, I hope so. I mean, he is a little tiny guy. He's going to have his crushes. And, you know, Rarity seems to go for the, uh, the macho, um, well, that's my guess anyway, smooth kind of character. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I think, um, I think uh, Andrew Francis did a really good job of his character and, 
um, I could see him being a character that Barry would go for. So <laughs> sure, sure. And then what about the mayor? How did how did you find that voice and that character? Oh, the mayor is basically my own bass voice. Um, and when I use my own bass voice, uh, or any character, any actor uses their own bass voice, they tend to go into a um, a mode. In other words, what I would say if I'm using my own voice is that I am now Kathy. Um, that has been hired as a mayor for the town. Just as I would prepare an on-camera piece where if I'm playing a doctor, then I would imagine myself as literally being a doctor. When you put yourself in the role of being a mayor, then you, you, you suddenly have the stance of the mayor. And there she is in her glory talking to the people of Ponyville and you know, there's a presentational kind of feel about the character. She's an authority. She's kind. She's considerate. But she has authority and there's a slight business-like bent to her. So I see myself in the role and I allow myself to sort of be that, that character with her vocation. And it comes out doing that. I'm a firm believer when I teach my workshops, I even uh, make this a primary thing in my teaching, is I always go to the essence of the character first. Meaning, I let myself feel that character and ad lib in that character what I may think they would respond like if they were under attack or if they were sad or if they were in just a normal conversation. And then I actually go to the script and prepare it that way. Some people just go to the script and try to get the character from the actual lines by changing the phrasing, going up, going down. That's a very left brain process. Um, I like to work with the essence first and, and then move outward with the details. And does that apply to um, to Spike? I mean, earlier you had said how Spike was you know, innocent, he had good intentions. I mean, is that at the crux to Spike or is that, I mean, how did you take yeah. that approach to Spike, same thing? Well, with Spike, um, the description of him was that he was a baby dragon okay. uh, or originally. And so, uh, therefore, I made him, uh, you know, I, I approached him as an even younger dragon than he is now. So I first approached him as more of a baby than as a little boy. And in doing that, he sort of talked like that and he was kind of lit. So it was a really baby? And mm -hmm. I think it was too much so because it took away from the, um, you know, him being able to be mischievous and, and such. He has to be a certain age to be that. So with him, I started at the baby level and then um, the directors moved me to an older age. Um, if I, again, imagine myself as a, a, a little boy or a little girl, then I'm going to imagine myself in that body. I'm going to imagine myself literally as that persona. And that changes your body stance, your position, um, you become wide-eyed um, and very naive, and you just simply go there. It's, a, it's an acting muscle that you, you develop over, over time. So, I mean, is it, is it, I mean, for you, is, is it something, I mean, to, to channel that, is it, is it subconscious for you? Do you think you're pulling it from somewhere, or are you just, is it just all external? Like, are you just going for what you feel the character is going? Or, I mean, do you feel there is a, a real part of you that does come through in the voice yourself? Well, I think it's a combination. Um, I think it's it's having done it for so many years that part of that is now just a muscle. The other part is observing all characters, little children, little babies, uh, little boys and girls, and how they they are. Um, you'll notice little girls, when you observe little girls, they tend to sit there and they twirl their hair a lot, and they're always kind of talking with their heads bobbing up and down, and they're very precise, and their hands are moving, and they're usually doing something uh, almost in sharp motions, mm -hmm. whereas boys are kind of lazy. They kind of like, I don't know, they kind of talk like that, and they're just like, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of a laziness, and kind sure. of a, or, or, or they get kind of like, you know, they're, they're boys. And suddenly mm -hmm. they take off or they, they have certain motions or certain attitudes. So you, you start, I observe those things. And then I, I guess I allow that energy to resonate with me and um, can reproduce it. Um, the, the question of how is curious because I can't say 100%, but I do think it's a combination of sensing it and being able to relate that and mm -hmm. also just know you know, with, with my left brain, logically, what they would do. 
Sure, sure. And are you ever allowed to, are you or any of the other cast members ever allowed any, any sort of ab or improv on the characters? No, um, we stay very, very close. Well, we stay right on the script. We stay with the words that are written. The only ad-libbing that we usually do or can do is if we see that it's a, a scene that is joyful or sad or, you know, if Spike is, is really in a real snarky mood, mm -hmm. uh, then I can, you know, put in a grunt or I can put in a giggle at the beginning of the line or, um, you know, a harumph or something like that, which colors the um, the scene and also makes it more visual for the animators to draw to. So those little nuances we definitely put in. Um, a lot of them have to do with action, but some of them are just nuances, and that helps the animator to be able to to make the scene more interesting visually. And I can imagine it helps you quite significantly as well too, in terms of the character. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, I, I've done this with a, a, a couple of the other interviews I've done is I'm doing some free associate word association. So could you give me um, the first word that comes to your mind when I mention the following characters? Uh, Applejack. Workhorse. Rarity. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Wow. Uh... There's a, there's a ton. Uh, <laughs> first one, there's like a hundred that come up to mind. Um, I'm trying to find the word. Um, I want to say diva. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that with a chuckle. Diva, diva chuckle. Okay. Uh, Twilight. Um, sensible. Uh, uh, dash, Rainbow Dash. Adventurous. And then finally, Fluttershy. Oh, kind. Okay. Uh, the next fan question is, um, will, will we ever truly learn uh, Spike's backstory in the future? Well, I hope so. As an actor, I would love, I would love that. Um, that's a, that would be a great direction for the writers to move in, to start developing that. I, I don't know, but I sure would love that because, uh, yeah, that's a part of the story we sure don't know. We're not right. quite sure where he comes from or, or what his heritage is. So, uh, yeah, that could be a good fodder for, for more fun for Spike. Sure. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. And then my, my last question is, I don't want to press the issue, but can you give me any hints to season four? Will you be singing? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> because okay. A, moose, a moose just walked into the house. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go, click. <laughs> and you know, they're, they're tough to deal with those moose, right? <laughs> <laughs> that could be a hint. I, I, let, me, let me just say, Justin, yeah. I would love that. If sure. That yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. It's been quite the pleasure. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure too. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this, and good luck to all of you out there and wherever you are. It's again wonderful that we have your support, and we love doing it. And I think it's a wonderful uh, thing that's happened with My Little Pony and how it's reached so many hearts out there. I sure. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Important the bronies stick together. Impro important that the even the military bronies, I mean, they can certainly stand up and say, hey, this is the story, you know. Right. So, so you know, stay, you know, just stay where you guys are and keep the integrity and band together.